What's up, big kissy? You know, it's your boy Jerry out there with another video. Um, beautiful view out there next to the airstrip. So, be ain't a lot of noise in my background. It's a home away from home. But, yeah, guys, um, I will be with you guys for a while. I did tell you guys I will be out, you know, we're working on the kennels and whatnot, trying to build, develop a better structure. Uh, we're almost done with that, so we'll be shooting out some videos very, very soon. Uh, however, you know, in the meantime, I felt it was only right that I hit you guys up with a video and uh, we wanted to do a little bit of the Fabrida series, okay? So um, on our Fabrida series, I know a lot of people have been asking for it, you know, helping them out with the breeding and also things to do when jumping into a kennel. Yeah, we just had a helicopter arrival. <laughs> yeah, for our outside viewers, we're in St. Lucia. And this is the airstrip. Your boy J Reed, really close, really close. Uh, we're going to be talking about color, guys, today on the Fabrida series. You know, when you get the health and the structure out of the way, if you, as a breeder, you know, the people out there always look for some color in their dogs, you know, a lot of people. So when we get that structure, we get the health out of the way. You know, now we're focusing on getting you guys the colors that you're asking for out there. You know, what you want in your yard. So this video is going to make you guys understand a little bit better. This is going to be the first part of a multiple series broadcast from BKC. So um, today we're going to be starting to learn about color, guys. So let's jump straight into our four breeder series. Welcome to the four breeder series. Today we're going to be talking about color genetics. Being that we have a number of genetics to cover, this segment of the Fabrida series is going to be covered in multiple parts. However, most people who talk about dog genetics normally list them and then explain. Uh, we'll be getting through the genetics as we go along through these videos so that way you learn on a step-by-step -step basis with us. The first thing we want to understand is what is a locus. Locus, short for loci, is a specific location of a gene. That's all it is, guys, a specific location of a gene or in French, the DNA sequence on a chromosome. Now, as we go into the locus, we're going to find alleles. An allele is one of two versions of a gene when we talk about the canine department. We can have dominant genes and recessive genes. These alleles are going to determine the phenotype and the genotype of each dog. However, today we cover in phenotype and in more detail, color. Now, just remember, guys, this is all taking place in one location. So we're going to start off with the D-locus. The D-locus is the dilution gene. It's responsible for exactly what it says, dilution. Big disclaimer, guys, this is not rocket science. Everything is pretty straightforward when we're talking about color genetics, and you're going to learn that as we go along. Now imagine if you had a nice cup of coffee and you added some milk in there. This is exactly what this gene does. The dilution gene is responsible for a number of the colors that we see nowadays, like the blue, or should I say gray, the lilac, champagne, all of these diluted colors, they're a result of the recessive D gene. And notice I said recessive, guys. Yes, it is a recessive gene. And for a recessive gene to show on a dog, it has to be double recessive. Now, just a quick pointer out there, guys. The recessive genes are going to display as a lowercase letter. And a dominant gene is going to be display as a uppercase letter. So going back to the D locus, the alleles would have to be both lowercase d's in order for the dog to display the dilution gene. In other words, double recessive. Now guys, one thing to note is that dominant genes requires only one copy in order to display. So if the D locus reflects capital D, capital D, then that dog would be a black dog in this case and would not display a dilution. Or in this case, I should say, a gray or blue coat. And in that same note, if the D locus displays capital D, lowercase d, then that dog will still not reflect the dilution gene. However, in the case of uppercase d, lowercase d, this dog will be referred to as a carrier of the dilution gene and could possibly pass it on to his or her offspring. So let's go ahead and use an example of our lineup from the BKC kennel. So here we have Smoke who carries the double D recessive gene and Roxy who carries the capital D and lowercase d gene. Of course, some of you are wondering, you know, how would we know that for Roxy, being that she carries a black coat? These are something that you guys are able to determine without even doing a DNA test. And I'll tell you how we get to that determination as we go along. So this diagram in front of you is what we call a Punnett square. This is a simple way to determine exactly what production you're going to be getting from your litter from locus to locus. So all you do, guys, 
is you use the diagram in front of you here. You could draw one yourself. You take the alleles of the father and you put them on the left side of your diagram in synchronization with the boxes. And then you do the same on the top of your diagram and all you do is match the letters in each box, as you can see here. By knowing the color genetics of your dogs, this is gonna allow you to use a Punnett square to determine exactly what to expect from your litter. Now, of course, guys, it could be more or less, but this is as close as it will get. Now, as you can see, guys, 50% of our litter is gonna display the double D recessive gene, which means that they're gonna display the dilution gene in their coat. The other 50% will not, however, will be carriers of the diluted gene. Now, what I forgot to mention is that make sure you like and subscribe this video, guys. It goes a long way and we'll definitely appreciate you guys following us on Instagram as well. So let's jump into the K locus, which is also the dominant black gene. Now, the K locus is made out of three alleles. So the first one is going to be the KB gene. Again, guys, it's very straightforward. The B stands for black. Then we have the KBR gene, another straightforward one, BR for brindle. And the last one we have would be the KY gene. The Y stands for yellow. This is also an open gate for the A locus, which we'll be talking about later. So the first gene we're going to be talking about in the K locus is the KB gene, which is going to give you a 100% black coat once you have one copy present. Now the KB gene is also dominant over the KBR and KY gene, which means that if a dog displays KB, KBR, then that dog will not reflect brindle. It's only going to reflect black. However, will be a carrier of the brindle gene and can pass it on to its offspring. Same thing goes for the KBKY gene. And lastly, if the dog is KBKB, then that is gonna be 100% black. However, there are some other Lokis that could affect the black color. For example, the D locus, which would cause dilution, if in fact it is double recessive. Now the KBR gene causes brindling, or what we would like to call tiger stripe as well. That allows the A locus to come through, but again, it causes the brindling. Now we're about to touch on the A locus so you guys can have a full understanding. However, guys, I also want you guys to note that the KBR gene is also a dominant gene, so it only takes one copy to show. But please don't forget that if it is matched up with the KB gene or allele, then the brindling will not show and that dog will display a black coat, but carry the brindle gene. Now let's jump into the KY locus, guys, which is my personal favorite. The KY gene is what allows the A locus to come through. So in the absence of the KB gene, the A locus is going to reflect. However, these dogs will display black pigmentation on the nose, in some cases gray, especially when you have the dilution gene, double recessive present. And don't forget guys, the KY gene is still a dominant gene. So it only needs one copy to reflect. So finally, we're gonna jump into our A locus. So with the A locus guys, we have four different alleles that we could talk about. So first we have our AY gene which as you can see the Y guys stands for yellow. This is where we're gonna see a fawn or sable color coat on our dogs. Then we have our AT gene, which is gonna reflect tan points on our dogs. You know, some people might want to refer those to those as tri, but we can also have two-tone dogs who would reflect tan points as well. They're not considered tries. Then we would have our AW gene, which is gonna reflect the wild sable. Typically you get these on the uh, German Shepherd breed. And then finally we have the A allele, which is sort of like an NA for the A locus, meaning that it would not be present. This allows the recessive black to take over. Now guys, I want you to take a special note because this also works similar to the K locus, whereas the AY gene is dominant over the AT gene. The AT gene would be dominant over the AW gene and the AW gene obviously covers non-existent gene, A. So for example, guys, here we have one dog on the left here, my boy Mufasa, who is an AYA gene carrier in the A locus and my boy on the right hand side here who's carrying an ATA gene pool who's that boy Messiah. If we had to put these guys genes together here on a Punnett square this is what we're going to receive. On the bottom right here 25% of our dogs are going to carry the AA gene when it comes to the A locus which means the yellow gene is not going to show. So based on the Punnett square 25% of our dogs are gonna be recessive black. So I put in a little icon of the dogs here so that way you guys can understand a little better. On the top left, we have an AYAT dog, which means that dog is gonna be a carrier of the tan points. However, will display sable. And on the bottom left, we also have another sable color coat, which means that 50% of our litter is gonna display the fawn or sable color. And as you can see guys on our top right corner, 25% of our litter is going to hold the tan points. 
So yes guys, it is impossible for a true fawn color dog to display tan points on its coat as the AY gene is dominant over the AT gene. So guys, I wanted to take some time to address a question, you know, why Mufasa? A lot of people have been asking me why we kept Mufasa after he was already heading to a new home. I mean, obviously our dogs here can throw the color, you know, holding that AY gene. However, we wanted one dog who could actually be the face of the kennel. And of course he was one of the dogs from our very first litter and only litter so far. So we wanted some, someone to carry the face of the litter and we found no better way but to put out something, you know, that was brand new to the kennel, you know, brand new to our people following, you know, and we selected the blue fawn as well, you know, as the confirmation and structure that he came with. That's why we kept Mufasa, guys. This has been your Forbida series. Hope you guys had fun. BKC, we out. Don't forget, guys, like, subscribe, you know, and of course, show some love on the Instagram as well and follow. It's breezy out here. BKC, we out.